One of them wanted to be the security guy. He claimed he was a security guy. Welcome to a pixel version of Security Guy Radio. Brian, is my microphone on this time? Okay. Just want to check his last it week. Okay. He, last week you cut me off a little bit, dude. Just want to check. Can't blame him. Oh, Mr. Bristow, how are things? Very good. Very good. Busy weekend. That's good. You know, I, did the uh, uh, CPP mentoring. Teaching global security. You're mentoring somebody? I am. That's God right. help them. I find that remarkable. <laughs> yeah, God help them. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, had, we got a very good class this year, you know. Very good class. Good. So. Well, today I want to show you something here. <clears throat> In celebrating of St. Patrick's Day. When When's St. Patrick's Day? It's the 17th. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, when. That's right, <laughs> Mr. British. Look what I got here. <laughs> the hell is that? Oh. This is, oh. I, this is my little Irish <laughs> comrade here, the boxing Irishman. See that? Yeah, I wonder what the so hell is. So, over down the uh, camera, you can see. We're going to have an, a name my Irish pen contest. Actually, I, di- I didn't realize they were gloves, actually. Yeah, a little oh, boxing. Uh, yeah. It's like every time you get out of line, they can go whack. <laughs> all right? So we're going to start with maybe Connor, Aiden, Angus, some <laughs> yeah. good Irish names. So email me at chuck at securityguyradio.com to give me your favorite Irish names. From my Angus? Is that an Irish Angus name? is an Irish Hold name. Oh, Scottish. You sure? I'm fairly positive. Okay. Yeah, yeah, fairly positive. Uh, <laughs> but we digress once again. So, a couple little housekeeping items. Website is up. Remember, we talked about that yes. last week. That is securityguyradio.com. So, go there and you can log into all our... And we're getting loads of hits. Yeah, lots of hits. Very good. Well, we're up to 26 countries now, I believe. Yeah. That have logged in and I think a couple thousand hits. We probably have a couple thousand listeners now. Is there any more, weird, any more weird countries coming on? Uh, no, some I can't pronounce, but they're... I'm not sure they're on the... NATO list or the... Uh, Might be some from the Ukraine Ax- looking for some help. Axis of evil right. list. I'm not sure. <laughs> There's a lot of different com- countries listening. Some advice. So, so remember to check us out on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Yes. All right. All right so today we're going to talk about Surveillance 101. Now, it just so happens, before I came, as I always do, I did a little bit of research. Never. About surveillance. What's your opinion on surveillance cameras? I think... Mean, um, they're useful in the in the correct uh, environment for the correct reason. Do you think, think they solve think crimes? Um, they solve crimes. Right. They solve a lot of crimes. But do they prevent them? That's a good question. I, I think I the stat you know, man will answer yeah. your question for you today. Just so happens, right here I happen to have some statistics. Is that a rustle of paper? This is a rustle of paper on my oh. mic, my uh, noise canceling microphone. I'm sure <laughs> you cannot hear. Uh, statistics from HowStuffWorks.com by Kristen Conjure. We looked this up. Now, I hate to say this. It just irks me to say this, but it's true. Cameras started big in 1986. Where? In London. Uh, in yes, UK. London started the whole thing. Absolutely. Not not Ireland, but London. I'm afraid it was not Ireland. Yeah. It's where they had three cameras in one square mile area called uh, King's Lynn. You know where King's Lynn is? Yes. Okay, yeah. so that's where it started, supposedly. I have to argue with that, though, because I, um, I actually went up to Information Room, which was called IR at the time. Right. In the, it must have been 81, and um, they had cameras in Trafalgar Square and Soho and a bunch of areas. So uh, I think it was probably before that time, you know, and they were, they were good PTZs. Well, close anyway, right? Yeah, close. 86, okay. Yeah. yeah. So they called uh, call this place the Ring of Steel. Yeah. That's, is that true? <laughs> well, so guess how many cameras they have today? Oh, yeah. Uh, millions. Well, 500,000, all right? Five hundred thousand. Now, is that just in London, or is that just, or is that? Uh, That's because um, I'll tell you the actual well, correct number for England. In the U- well, no, that well, was UK, just London. Yeah, in the UK, there's one point eight five million. Now, there's some people say there's four point two million, but um, a guy named Deputy Chief Constable, uh, what was his name, Clive Norris, did a bunch of research and. Um, I guess the 4.2 is a little bit too much, not quite the number, and he reckons it's about 2 million. So We have 500,000 in, in London specifically, which I thought was amazing. So after they started this trend, then a lot of U.S. cities like Philly and New York started back in the 90s, um, and CCT sales jumped 700% yeah. from 1980 to 2000, which I thought was really kind of interesting. And law enforcement officials are usually the most uh, positive about this, right? Does it give you a number for the jump after 9-11? Was there a huge jump? Uh, it does not because, again, this is partly composed uh, by How Stuff Works, and I have some more stats here from uh, Washington Times 
and our good old Department of Justice, who <laughs> apparently yeah, yeah. all surveys are no closer than 2007 or whatever we look at for some reason. But it's still interesting. Um, now, law enforcement, after this trend started, claimed that, uh, for example, ba- Baltimore, they claimed a 17% drop in crime. In crime. And New York claimed um, 36% drop in cli- crime. And Philadelphia claimed a 37% drop. Now, they say this is based on cameras, right? Yeah. Except there was a study where they installed 73 cameras in Washington, D.C. They've been there since 2006. And it, this is a quote. None have provided footage that has helped solve any crimes. <laughs> and the source. Well, it's because there are the white collar crimes in Washington. Washington Post. No, no, that's not what huh? they're saying. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you something. Oh, was it that. actually? Yeah. <laughs> that's true. House of Cards, right? And then uh, New York Police Department reported a 30% drop in high crime in tough neighborhoods after they installed cameras in the Bronx, but those installations coincided with increased police patrols. So, so so far it doesn't sound so good for an argument that they prevent crime. Of course, there's the traffic lights that make money. And then now the Home Research Group, Home Office Research Group, that's British, I think, right? Yes. Yeah, so they conducted a really comprehensive study in 2005, and they confirmed that CTT networks appear nearly inefficient. That's, I guess, for prevention, British right? term, yeah, yeah, for prevention. And then, of course, the U.S. Department of Justice did a survey, and they said they found little evidence that they significantly reduce crime or prevent. So we got no vote for reducing and no vote for preventing. But I think that's not the whole story. I think I think this is just one way to look at it because we're looking at this from a police issue. And then, well, of course, you know, the privacy issue came in because the ACLU is blocking or trying to block a lot of camera installations in public places, yeah. arguing that this is what? It's either George Orwell, 1984, or it's... So they say you can't world. put them in restrooms? Well, th- they're arguing that, that it, it's going to start infringing upon our right to privacy. I'm not too far away from that. I mean, where do you stop, right? Yeah. The, uh, the other argument is that the facial recognition software actually supports cameras because now... If I have a picture of Paul Bristow on camera and I match that digitally in a mug book, I'm not going through everybody's video looking for everybody. Yeah. And I'm not also tilting the cameras up into second windows. I'm surprised windows. we haven't heard more about this with the NSA stuff, actually. You know, people jumping on the on the CCTV side. I think people don't even assume it's there. I think yeah. they just, you know, don't pay attention to it. And then the Washington Times then did this specific um, story on that Washington article just read. So they said that they had 123 circuit TVs, um, and they used, they had about 931 times that they used the cameras in 2012, and that increased 50% over the previous year. So they keep going. For investigations, I'm assuming. Yeah, they keep right. going up on this stuff, yeah. right? So in other words, they're trying to. Um, See, I think if you go back to the prevention side, now, I think that the, the, the area of prevention, are, you know, apart from the possibility that, that, you know, you might have somebody who sees a camera and doesn't do the crime, I think, as we were talking earlier, the prevention for future crimes, the fact that you may see the way that a crime was committed when you start investigating it, then you can prevent that same scenario happening again because you've seen how it was committed. Oh, I agree. So I think yeah. you can actually say that there is yeah. a you know a big prevention uh, uh, part of it there. Do you think that a lot of people, when they go to buy a camera system for their business or the home, think that they're preventing crime oh absolutely to turn it yeah. i think so too yeah. yeah yeah and i think the facts just don't quite support well that. i think yeah. perhaps employees a little bit different right if you got if you're putting cameras in in internally in office areas that type of thing where people are known so that may prevent that internal theft well they put these cameras degree. in washington um Those were outdoor by the way they have a they have a, a law that says um in dc that there's no authority for live monitor video feeds. So in Washington, D.C., you apparently can't look at live video feeds unless you get a, a warrant. Oh, Whereas in good. other cities, you can. Of course, <laughs> yeah, that's because yeah. politicians don't want you looking yeah, at something. Yeah, exactly. They don't want yeah. you looking at it, right? And the majority of footage, you know, about 379 videos, which are from neighborhoods and video cameras from transportation departments. So those are more public than, than employment, I suppose, yeah. right? But again, the conclusion is basically the four-year study concluded that the cameras alone did not appear to have an effect on the crime. And then the issue... Now, I'm presuming most of these weren't monitored either. No, no, these are, these are feeds into the police station. That's oh, what I'm okay. saying, right. which I found unusual. Yeah, right? yeah. So the ACLU, ACLU is saying, uh, hey, wait a minute, we have mission creep. If you want to put these cameras out as a test in a public area, but now you want to add them to other areas, they're saying stop because we got the Big Brother effect, right? So I don't know. It's, it's a tough one. Um, local police departments, uh, the big police departments, 61% of them use video cameras in their patrol cars. Uh, 
as of 2007, but I thought that was interesting. Uh, most apartments serving 500,000 or more residents used fixed site surveillance cameras, and they estimate that about 66% of local police departments, who employ 74% of all the cops, right, use video cameras on a regular basis. Mm. So in some jurisdictions, it's not legal to use them unless there's a warrant. Yeah. In other jurisdictions, they're using them. Uh, but the, when they did the survey, they found that you know the smallest jurisdiction with three cameras and the largest jurisdiction uh, was only 200 cameras. So no, they're not big. In, they're not big yeah. in, in the states. Yeah. As far as police departments using them. Yeah. So again, usually police departments are behind for other reasons, for budgets and things like that. Uh, so I just thought this stuff was kind of interesting because it's not as simple as people think it is. No, it's not. And it never is, right. is it? No. And we always wind up sounding less intelligent by the end of our introduction yes. because we, <laughs> we don't, don't really know. It's we're about. confused. <laughs> we're absolutely confused about everything we talk about, which is why. We have the experts. We bring in the experts, right. So our guests today are Mr. Thomas Hines, Vice President of North America for Lidland, and Mr. Robert Melendez, the Director of Automation Channel for Lidland, which is a division of Merit Lidland USA, one of the largest um, camera manufacturers in the world, 12 countries, I guess you guys are in? That's correct. Um, yes. Yeah. So we brought in some experts that understand manufacturing, but that also understand the significance and the roles these cameras play in the different markets. So welcome, guys. Thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. So what do you think about my little introduction there? you agree with those numbers, disagree? Well, I, th <laughs> I think your numbers were pretty much based on cameras in public spaces. Yeah, uh, public so spaces. Uh, the, and uh, use by police who are think they're sure. going to use them for something effective, and it turns out I think they're using them incorrectly. That's my opinion. But And, and that may or may not be the case, but that's uh, those are skewed, heavily skewed numbers. Okay, And the reason they're heavily skewed is – what uh, a city or a police department's doing, and by the way, I used the the largest one was two hundred cameras. That's of two. That's of two thousand seven. In other words, they weren't really okay. All know. right. Well, because you know, I so think, that was the I largest. Think New York has department? about fifty thousand cameras, and I'm trying to think about how many are in Chicago, but in well, DC. but this is in two thousand seven. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it's it's gone up. They have said that, but oh, uh, uh, just disproportionately. Right. But the. Um, the use of cameras in public spaces and the effect on crime is going to be, or the effect of reduction of crime, is going to be an entirely different equation than the use of cameras in private spaces in their yeah. reductions. And you, you're, you're not only talking apples and oranges, you're talking, you know, uh, just two totally different kinds of concepts. Why so? <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. Um, businesses are looking for an ROI. Okay. Politicians we're, we're on are looking for a whole different reason. They're looking to get reelected. Um, so uh, I know that comes as a complete surprise to anyone uh, listening here that politicians want to get reelected. But the, um, the reality is for a business to uh, employ any technology, I don't care if you're talking about laptops, iPhones, uh, anything today, they're looking for uh, an ROI, and for them to uh, put in video surveillance, they're trying to reduce their liability, which is uh, maybe, maybe not a crime prevention uh, function. Hmm. Um, but they are also trying to, and I, I think you were saying it earlier, they're trying to um, use the forensic evidence off of video to prevent the next crime. That's just as important, if not more so, to them than the one that just happened. That's what you just said, Paul. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like right. And uh, you know, w if they realize that, um, uh, I, I mean, you, you have entire uh, architectural disciplines that have sprung up around uh, trying to prevent crime, and uh, you, you just walk into a bank and you can you can yeah. see the, sh the construction. So why? Why are the public sector missing this part? I can see, you know, the law, politicians, I get it. But why do the police don't get that part of it? And why don't they use integration and design to actually help them prevent crime? We know that if we deploy more police cars, single-man police cars in an area, as opposed to the detectives behind the desk, crime goes down exponentially, just disappears. And if cameras were deployed and people knew they are being used in a proper way to identify, do you think it would go down in the public sector as well? Or, or can it just not be designed in that... Mom. Well, I, I think in some cities they do. I mean, you, you have you have tens of thousands of cameras that are more covert, but then in some areas you have you know the so-called blue light cameras. You know, go to a city like Chicago, and the the box up on the pole is big, 
ugly and, right. and blinking right. for a reason. Speaking of big, ugly, and blinking, I'll be back with Paul Bristow yes. in a moment Tell on you Security know. Guy Radio. Welcome back to the Thomas Hines Radio Show, <laughs> discussing off air comments when the mic is on. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Just teasing everybody. Welcome back to Security <laughs> Guy Radio. Chuck Harold, Paul Bristow, securityguyradio.com. Please go there and help us name our little Irish boxing leprechaun, Sean, <laughs> Connor, <laughs> Angus, perhaps Patty. Paul. Patty. Yeah. Patty would be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> appropriate term. And you can watch that on the Is that video. a pen or something? It's a pen. So oh, okay. And, and you there push you a little button, and the Irishman boxes you right in the, oh. in the choppers there. See that? So look at this on the video, you guys. And you'll have to look at that where? On YouTube. Cause yes. That, because why? Because we're trying to pay tuition. That's right. All right. <laughs> so we're back with uh, Robert Melendez and Thomas Hines from Lidland. Do you guys prefer, uh, now is Lidland, Lidland like the U.S. branch of Merit, or is it all one big company or what? Well, uh, Leland is, I guess, our brand. Uh, Merritt Leland is our proper corporate name. Oh, okay, good. So. Okay. All right. Make sure we get the right name out there. I always mispronounce things. I say the wrong name. I call the chief of police Riverside the wrong name. It's just what I do. I have just a bad memory. Yes, Sorry, you I, did. I know. That one. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I got a ticket on my car uh, the next yeah, day. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't drive for Riverside anymore. The, uh, <laughs> uh, All right. So we were talking about the effectiveness of surveillance in public spaces as opposed to private sector. And when we left off, you were talking about how the return on the investment is the important thing in the private sector, and it does pay off, and you find in your business that that's where the success is. And we're just going to start talking about why we don't find the success in the public sector. Now, the people, I think ACLU the most probably complains is because those are public sector. I don't think they've encroached in private areas to say, well, you can't have a surveillance camera inside your business. They're more concerned about the public spaces. So tell me why you think the return on the investment is so good in the private sector. I understand they're getting crime prevention, crime deterrent. They can solve a crime. Do you think it really offsets things like guards, physical bodies? Do they, do they replace guards? Because that's a big cost. What do you think, Robert? Um, I, I really don't think it, it replaces guards per se, but I I've, I've know we've dealt with a lot of different school districts who are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in in security guard fees and then they're kind of deterring from that and getting rid of the security guard who is only going to show up to the scene once they get an alarm and and then end up calling the cops anyways so right. so they end up going through the monitoring company um uh, and and dealing directly with the police so like that's that. more for non-business hours correct i mean that's more aimed at the non-business sort of hours yeah i, I guess yeah. i'll say yeah it would be for non-business hours okay. anything after hours or after between school times and that kind of thing. I mean, I actually think that it, the the cameras improve what the security officers are doing. It can, you know, because I mean, they got eyes everywhere at, at some point. You know, uh, although they can't watch every camera, as long as you have it motion censored, whatever. At least, at least it, you know, it, uh, enables the officers to actually re- respond to a problem. Well, we had big success happens. at the studios with archival. Yeah. Right. We retrieved it and we solved a crime. We prevented a future crime because we know how something happened. But as far as monitoring, if you have an improper internal policy and you have a guy on a camera eight hours and he falls asleep after two and he misses or, something. Or 40 cameras. Or 40 cameras. Or, <laughs> For eight yeah, hours. Yeah. <laughs> it just it doesn't work that way. Uh, so we see lots of these video surveillance products at like Home Depot and Radio Shack. And they're 200 bucks and you get five cameras and you plug them in and, and you hook them up to your internet and you can watch... Uh, Watch the house on your smartphone. Good thing, bad thing. Do they work? Do they not work? That's not what you guys sell. I understand that, but sure. But that doesn't mean it's not a legitimate part of the market. It, it's a matter of, well, you, obviously you get what you pay for in this world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but th- just because something is inexpensive doesn't mean it doesn't have a piece uh, or or a, a, a legitimate location in the marketplace. Um, clearly, uh, I don't care if you're talking. The equipment in this studio, you know, you could go to Radio Shack and buy a microphone and and claim you have a radio station, but it doesn't make the quality of the the same quality of this uh, station. Um, And I think when you're looking at the kind of things that are available for self-install, you need 
uh, simplicity because anything that's not simplistic, you're going to need help to install it. You're going to need help to troubleshoot it. And when it goes wrong, the same guy that's selling you the uh, wire and the nails and the bushes and the trees and the, the grass seed isn't going to be able to help you troubleshoot your video surveillance system. So as manufacturers, let's talk about that for a second. <clears throat> I go buy a setup at uh, Lowe's Home Depot. I'm self-installing. That's mm -hmm. on me if something goes wrong. As a manufacturer, do those guys have any liability if something doesn't work? I can see if you're an integrator, Robert. Let's say you're out there selling and designing, and you're putting things in, and there's a camera fail. There's some liability issues that you have to make sure that thing works, and it's going to keep on working. Are people at risk for trying to do these things on themselves and feeling they have a sense of security? You mean, you mean are the, uh, yeah, the as low a manufacturer, budget are, yeah. are we at risk? Uh, no, we don't carry an incumbent risk because there's too much of a disconnect between what uh, the – the, the product has to be installed by that person, and that's 90% of the equation for it to start operating. Um, that's not the issue. The issue isn't liability risk. It's more getting the system up and running and keeping it up and running. Right. And, you know, we get calls all the time because we're a manufacturer of people that uh, perhaps, um, let's say, inherited some of our older equipment, and they're trying to install it on their, on their home, or they're trying to – Bottom line is manufacturers aren't equipped. The, the integrators are, but the manufacturers aren't equipped to give them that level of uh, support any yeah. more than Microsoft is is uh, equipped to help you when every time your uh, computer. Uh, well, once they stop making XP, that's it. Yeah, it's yeah. the world's over. Right. <laughs> so you guys are primarily in the uh, IP camera market. Is that your big big chunk? Um, well, I mean, we've been manufacturing for over 30 years, so we've definitely transitioned to IP. That's the the future. And well, you were saying earlier on going. that there's still a, a big market for analog and definitely, you know, yeah. Okay. Um, there's there's tons of existing legacy systems that are out there, infrastructures that rely on an analog um, support, analog cameras to to be plugged in. So you so you're still actually manufacturing. Yeah, we we, for, we manufacture both. Yeah, okay. Well, anything you could think of from. Uh, Analog cameras to 700 TV line, DVRs, so recording platforms to IP cameras, megapixel cameras, NVRs, which is network video recorders. So is, is, the, is, the, sorry, is the analog side dropping off or is it sort of keeping pace with the IP? Well, a analog as a uh, uh, compare in comparison to IP technology yeah. uh, in the video surveillance world is dropping every year, but it still actually has a majority of the marketplace Interesting. let's oh, really? say in in north america yeah and the reason is it's the hundreds maybe a few millions of cameras and systems that are out there uh all those legacy systems uh they're they're not just going to toss them out there's just too much money invested in them so w their first and simple answer is to keep that legacy system going yeah. by adding more analog to it but second is even if they're going to migrate, uh, they're going to change to IP, they're going to do it in a migratory path as opposed to an instant changeover. Uh, where the reverse is true in new systems. New system installs, the overwhelming majority are IP. IP. Okay. Yeah. They never had a system before. If so they, they never had a system okay. before. Correct. So let's dumb this down for my mom up in Oregon, okay? IP stands for Internet Protocol, yes. which basically means that a camera you put in, it's an IP camera, becomes a computer and becomes an address more or less. It's an address on the web. It's Correct. an address on a network. Oh, but that's it, the but web is a type of network. Right, right. Yeah. So it's well, usually it's an address on an intranet, an internal network. Correct. But it can be streamed outside so you could watch your guards in Arizona when you're on vacation in Alaska. So it, it is connected to a network. And then analog is really uh, it's a hard wire. It's an old-fashioned copper wire that connects a bunch of things together and records on a videotape machine. Like we used to have in the 80s to Doesn't play. Doesn't have to be taped, though. It, it, it well, can, can be convert a computer. it. Computer. Yeah, it can convert it, right? Yeah. You still see types? Uh, repeat that. You still see uh, types? Uh, anywhere? We no? don't. <laughs> no, no. Because somebody <laughs> told me that a lot of casinos, casinos are still so, using yeah, types. Some still, still? Do. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Why is that? You know, is that All just the money's a cost again? Up in it. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, it's convenient for them. Yeah. And those okay. guards still have uh, beta at their house too, and they're watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> movies There's now. nothing wrong with beta. That's true. All right, so. Here's what I see about IP cameras, and I, maybe you can tell me about London on this, right? There's such potential, if you know what you're doing, and you don't have to be too smart to know how to do this, to drop these cameras into private places, to drop them in the locker room. We see it all the time. They're dropping in a locker room. They're dropping in a private space. 
Uh, you were telling a very interesting story <laughs> at dinner tonight about that. Uh, not much you can do about it. Somebody knows what they're doing. So we become less private. I don't think that equates to more secure. I think more private, less private equates to less secure. I mean, tell me, tell me that story in the G version about, uh, was it a grocery store, restaurant, what was it? Uh, department store? Department store, yeah, okay. Um, well, I'll help me make it, make sure it stays G <laughs> I'll here. help you make it stay G. <laughs> um, you don't need to be G for the internet, do you? Oh, oh right, yes, you right. do. No, no, we got to be no, G. Bro, bro, I want to close you down if yeah, you, right if you get too noisy. No, I, I, a, uh, <laughs> a customer of longstanding, a security director of a small chain of de- department stores, was um, concerned that some of his own security staff weren't perhaps doing their work, that they were just lounging in the employee or the security staff lounge. And... Uh, um, really, when he needed them doing their patrols, and that would, be, the that would be legally a public area. I'm not a lawyer, but I mean, more or less, that's a public area. No, not pub, not public. Uh, but it's owned by the company, which is different. Well, okay. I don't mean public like the you know grandma shopping at the counter, but it's not it's not a private office. It's not a bathroom. It's not a area where you have an expectation of privacy. In a break room, I wouldn't think you have an expectation of privacy. Yeah, and and in a business, you have. Almost no expectation right. of privacy, Correct. except in very private areas right. like restrooms. Yeah. Okay, and so um, this uh, particular uh, manager um, put covert cameras in the break rooms to see what uh, not just any employees were doing, but his own security staff were doing, and and he found that they weren't um, patrolling; that instead they were. Um, hanging out inside the uh, the break room doing improper things. And all he had to do was really just ask them about it. And uh, this one particular female security officer was so embarrassed that she quit immediately and they didn't have to uh, sh- even show her the evidence. Let me see if I can phrase it. Let's just yeah, say. Yeah, help me out here. <laughs> let's just say she was in the break room uh, in a state of undress getting busy. With, with nobody <laughs> else there. With nobody yeah. else there. <laughs> yeah, okay. with nobody else there. All right, so. And, and and the nice thing is he 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 just made sure that the cameras were there for, for at least a few nights, a few shifts. You know, he wanted to make sure that he got Bro, good evidence. Brian's closing us down. Got, oh, got, Brian, are we, are we, is the FCC coming and shut us down for that story? I tried to make it uh, G-rated. Well, <laughs> nice time to get out of this. Back in a minute on SecurityGuyRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Security Guy Radio, securityguyradio.com. Like us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. This just in, a Security Guy text exclusive. Uh, quote, tell the guys we are all listening. Oh, who was that? Their team. Oh, oh, there you go. Tom and Robert's team are listening. <laughs> oh, did, oh, that, okay, they didn't like hear that well? earlier story, <laughs> except for that last okay, story. Okay, maybe they weren't listening to that yeah. story, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we were talking about... Um, Surveillance, public places, and Paul, you had some really interesting questions during the break. So go with that. Yeah, from a from a global perspective, I mean, where is the where is the the volume of sales from a global perspective, and where and where is the um, the biggest increase at the moment? Well, I, I don't have uh, stats that I can start. Listening yeah, just to, from but a general. Th- th- there's no doubt that North America is the crown jewel of uh, the video surveillance market, yeah. uh, uh, both. Uh, installed base uh, upgrades and new systems. Um, and, and what, but what's, that's not what's the just sort of time period for the increase. Is there is that a gradual increase going up, or has there been a spike? Well, there was or certainly a big spike after nine yeah. uh, right. eleven. But um, uh, every time uh, there's another hiccup, wh- yeah. whether it be a Columbine or you name it. Uh, for, I, I hate to diminish it by calling that a hiccup, but every time there's something like that. Um, there's always a spike across the country uh, of not just video surveillance, but visitor management systems and access yeah, control yeah. and all these things, let's say, in the school market, for example. Yeah. Perfect example of that. Um, uh, Europe is certainly a very robust mar- uh, market, especially industrialized Europe. I yeah. mean, Germany is a m- massive market. Um, but um, th- then when it comes to new business, new growth for the video surveillance world, Asia uh, let's face it, they are coming from behind. Yeah, yeah. Not in the video world, but in the business world. And, yeah. oh, and yeah. they've come behind, you know, they, they don't 
refer to that part of the world as tigers for nothing. It's growing, 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 growing yeah. very fast. And same for our company in that regard. And Hong Kong's had cameras, you said, for 50 years. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, for, I mean a place – that's why I'm trying to differentiate. It's a mature market. Yeah, between, let's say, um, uh, uh, Shanghai, which uh, as, as a – uh, area has gone absolutely berserk in its camera uh, numbers over the last five, ten years, but mm. that's because uh, all the buildings went up over yeah. the last right. five, ten years. Yeah. Where uh, a place like Hong Kong, it's, uh, uh, I don't know if mature is the right word, but pretty close, it's always been robust in well, a place well, like Hong Kong. Well, it was owned by the British for 99 years. Of course. Oh, that's right. See, but it's okay besides <laughs> that. <laughs> Sun never said Sun the British Empire. Yeah, I wished. All right, so let's talk about. What people have to worry about. I'm going to play devil's advocate, okay? Because I, I would say politically I'm in the middle, really am. I mean, I, I kind of make up my mind. I go different ways and different things. I kind of, I kind of, I hate to say it, but I'm kind of thinking the ACLU has some kind of point here, because the more sophisticated these cameras get, and the more intrusive they are, the smaller they are, the more they can, you know, be stuck into a microscopic mechanical mosquito and fly around. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna have some issues with this. What well, do we? But what are you worrying about? What uh, are you What are you doing that you don't want the government well, that, to see? Well, that's not that the government say. isn't already seeing it. I don't care what they see me do. I care what they are going to make up that I was doing. <laughs> Pictures worth a thousand words, and you know it's an issue. So the quality's much better now. I mean, it's getting to be where an IP camera uh, e- does it equal an analog camera? By the way, of course it does, right? Pixels, oh, sure. and it's, it's better almost, right? You're talking six times the resolution of right. of any analog camera, the highest resolution analog. Camera. Is right. there any benefit from an analog? Is there anything that an analog is better than an IP? I mean, that that's a good question. IP is really relying on your network and your bandwidth and, and that kind of thing. So you have to make sure you have a, a good IT professional, have a really good infrastructure mm. within uh, if you're putting an IP system in. And your analog camera, I mean, that's just your straight RG59 hardwire coax. There's not a lot you can mess up with that. but um, So it's more of a coordination issue. Really, from the IT side to the ease of installation, side. Yeah. simplicity of the technology does give it a little bit of advantage. But that that's so uh, minuscule now. The the prices are coming closer and closer yeah. and closer. But the technology in the IP side, as Robert was just yeah, saying, yeah. When you look so at them side by better. side, I mean, it's going to be a oh, given. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can see an analog camera yeah. and something that's six times. That's very, yeah. very noticeable. Yeah. So we have different laws in different states and cities about video, who can use them, what they can use them for, how they can access yeah. it. If you come across another area we're not thinking about, who is resisting the installation of things like cameras or lighting and, and why? I think you told me something. At Canada. The, okay. Really? Really. Well, and and I don't know if resistance is is the right word, but they have um, Pipedia, uh, the personal information property. But I, I forget. Well, I'll have yeah. to look it up. But um, Pipedia is a series of laws that control what can be viewed and how and when and under what conditions. So um, where, let's say, in our country, uh, eavesdropping laws are very well defined and very restrictive. And they're old. Audio. Been around okay. a long time, yeah. Yeah. Um, video is uh, pretty well open. I mean, if mm. if I can see you, I can vi- vi- uh, put you under video yeah. surveillance. Um, I can't record your voice without being in a particular state that would allow one person. Wait uh, a minute. I, you, can can s- you can film me but not hear me? In, in many states. That's a contradiction. I b- wouldn't I agree more, but the Canadians are, have that a little more under control because they have uh, built into their constitution more restrictions or more protections, if you will, regarding personal information. Now, is that in public and private It places? is, uh, yeah. but undoubtedly the, the Canadian government can do more things because it it's doing it by statute. Yeah. Of course, from the country that, that brought us uh, How Things Were Made or whatever that show is, which is one of my favorite shows. It's great show. And they also have that great little law, or used to, about... Uh, you can't criticize somebody in public because you'll get sued for free speech. They, they have a lot of things like that going on. So that's an interesting contradiction in how they protect rights in one way and then throw them out the door in the other. So what's the challenge uh, on the manufacturing side if you're selling to a country like that? Do you have to use certain restrictions on your cameras? Do you have to build any software into them that allows the ability to turn things on and off and things like that and verify it? Yeah, and I, it's not as much what we're building into it. It's more that our the integrator who's buying from us and integrating the system, they need to know their local laws. 
and um, just because a camera, for example, can be turned on and, and can uh, uh, connect to a recording device doesn't mean you can and should legally. Same thing with uh, a microphone. There are cameras uh, all over that have microphones built yeah. into them, but most of them are not turned on in the U.S. Oh, I didn't realize that. Very At least reason. they say they're not. Well, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> unless, unless the signage has... They've given you proper notice. Uh, well, there used to be some laws back in the day where if you used a parabolic microphone, <clears throat> the argument was you couldn't hear that with your ear. Well, but I'm just pointing it at something mm -hmm. and I can still hear it. And if you don't want your conversation to be heard, then, you know, go inside your safe room or something. Right. But if they have the if they have the audio on with the camera, I could see that that could be, uh, could be problematic. Yeah. The yeah. audio side falls into the eavesdropping statutes. But the cameras so far are not really in most jurisdictions under eavesdropping. Uh, you mean not used that way, or yeah, well, not, they're not under the, controlled they're not, that way? They're not controlled under the eavesdropping laws. Mostly. No, but if you go into a casino, for example, the signs don't just say we uh, uh, video surveillance and recording is a process. It also say audio. The signage as you're walking in warns you that everything you do and say is being recorded, and that's a, that's a, that's a commonplace for both. So if I'm uh, you talked about a, a very famous case, which I'd like you to talk about, involved Connie Francis. Uh, this involved the non-use of a camera and the non-use of security, basically, right? Right. And I want the listeners to understand that this is something, if you're a business especially, you have to pay attention to because there's standards of care inside mm -hmm. security. And in one area, it may be that everybody has a camera, therefore you need to have a camera. And maybe in other places, there are no cameras because it doesn't call for it and your standard of care is different. But in most places that have a custodial or fiduciary duty to protect you, like a hotel, make sure you're safe at night, something like that, <clears throat> if you don't have these rules in place, you got a problem. So tell us about that case, because that really set case law and started a whole other cottage industry um, on litigation, right? It, it did. Um, back in, I think it was 1974, um, the famous uh, 1950s uh, uh, singer and actress Connie Francis um, was after a concert was at uh, I believe a Howard Johnson's I, it wasn't a big fancy hotel and uh, she was attacked and she was raped and the guy got away but um, she was able to um, uh, not only uh, prove that it occurred but she was able to sue for significant damages and <clears throat> up until that point the innkeeper's bill of rights or the innkeeper's limitation of liability and and we all see that every time we go to a hotel even if we don't read it it's generally on the door mm, or somewhere right. in the room uh, and it says essentially they're not responsible for anything you're you're at your own risk well up until that point th anybody that was accosted uh, attacked uh, or worse in a uh, hotel they lost well she managed with uh, probably the right lawyer and probably the right publicity to turn the tables and won, won big time, uh, like about a million and a half dollars back in 74. And then that really started, as you said, a, cot a cottage industry. There's um, uh, lawyers will, of course, seek or always seek reasons to sue, but they there's a uh, interest group, a litigation group called the Inadequate Security Litigation Group. And, and uh, when somebody is uh, hurt, whether it be on private property, in public property, whatever, they're looking for that uh, chink in the armor, uh, the reduction of security that compared to similar places and similar geographies with a similar profile so that they can use it as a uh, wedge. So what do you think the standard of care is in most security designs now? Are cameras a must, liability-wise? I mean, I think people put them in because they feel that if they didn't, even if they're not as effective as we think they are for prevention, if they didn't put them in, they may breach a standard of care and they may get sued. So sometimes they just put in sloppy, useless cameras. And if you put them in wrong, now you got another problem. Because you bothered to put them in, and you put them in, so all you see is a little pinhead, and I can't even identify Or, or a box of a blinking light. That's correct. <laughs> and you can't see it. In a double-A battery. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. So what what do you guys find that the people are ordering? And, and I, you know, I the only reason I brought you guys in here, because you can always tell trends about what people are manufacturing. If, uh, if the order for uh, Pet Rocks goes up in 1972, people are buying them, right? So... Obviously, you know the trends. You know what people are buying. What are people out there purchasing? What kind of quantities? And what are they trying to do with the new installations, let's say, IP stuff? Well, there's no doubt that 
the proliferation of cameras uh, is due in large, large measure to liability reduction, liability uh, mitigation. Right. Um, as, and I, I don't know if it's if you care if I use a name, but any of the big box uh, stores, they, uh, behind the scenes they'll tell you that the overwhelming majority of cameras are there to protect them against liability, not necessarily to catch bad guys. Uh, are, are you finding that more people, because at, at one time, you know, I, I wasn't really in favor of putting too many cameras in car parks unless I had a security officer or somebody to actually respond to an issue, all right? Are you finding that cameras in car parks are going up? Uh, and, and, you know, if that's the case, how are they dealing with the future liability of actually seeing an assault but not being able to respond to it? Well, yeah, if you put it in and you see it and <laughs> you sit there and do nothing about it, you have done another problem. So are you seeing that at all? Sure. Uh, I mean, it was uh, m- many businesses took the attitude uh, of, well, what we don't know, we can't be responsible for. Yeah. And again, attorneys uh, like the ones that subscribe to that interest group I mentioned to you changed that for them because uh, somebody would build a new garage and they'd say, well, let's have a nice pattern of cameras and of lights mm. and of other reasonable security measures. Something else we were talking about earlier. Uh, they, they maybe made sure that the uh, shrubbery was trimmed in an yeah, appropriate yeah. way so people could see uh, through their yeah, the whole patrolling car. Yeah. Well, now tell me that story about the green initiatives that people probably are gonna think are pretty fascinating and how even though maybe you want to do something as a city or a private property and you have some environmentalist group come in, it can actually caused you a big problem. It was a story back east or Klein or something? Yeah, like yeah. I mean, uh, uh, sustainability is obviously a big part of our lives today and just about everywhere we go. And the reality is, at times, uh, the sustainability efforts of a business or a community can actually uh, get in the way of or even conflict with security. And a perfect example is uh, I was working with a client a number of years ago who um, uh, they didn't want to put up lights in their dark parking lot, uh, which <laughs> happened to be uh, literally in a bad neighborhood. And, and the reason they didn't want to do it is um, they were uh, going for lead uh, silver or gold status. And uh, the amount of energy they used, the amount of light that would bleed out of their building and out of their parking lot into the neighborhood, these were all factors as they, look, uh, as they saw them. What about the <laughs> amount of people that would bleed in the parking lot if they didn't have that? <laughs> yeah, well, Wasn't yeah. a consideration. Did you ever get it put in? Yes, they uh, we uh, we we beat some sense into them and explained to them that uh, they were much better. Um, uh, and what they did was they put the infrastructure in for the for the lights and and in all the cameras. And of course, the problem was the, with the cameras was they just wouldn't be able to see very well at night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and the Little employees problem. wouldn't be able to see where they were going. But <clears throat> ultimately, they they uh, followed reason. So, what do you guys manufacture? That's Top of the line, state of the art that people are going to say, "Wow, that's pretty cool." What's what's your best product out there? And you know, dumb it down for my mom so she understands that lux is mean. I can see in the dark with it or something. Well, um, I think one thing that we manufacture that is pretty cool is kind of a world's first product, and that's kind of rare that you could say you have a world's first product, it's especially very rare. especially yeah. in yeah. this yeah. industry. Is we have a one of the world's first. It's a standalone network video recorder that records 1080p high definition and works with a touch screen interface. So just like today's technology that you have your iPhone, iPad, everybody's used to flipping through stuff, touching. Um, it basically auto configures itself, all the IP cameras. So it, it kind of takes the fear out of the people that were in the analog world and didn't want to jump into the IP world for fear of all the programming that's involved and, and everything. It, it'll basically auto-configure itself. So, auto hold on, for, for Chuck's mum, can you say that in English? <laughs> yes, it, it, it'll be... <laughs> What's uh, it look like? It looks like an iPad? We're not talking about a traditional old VCR with the big tape. We're talking about a... We're talking about a, a box. Of course, you're going to need something that's going to record your your video on it. So, it's a standalone box, okay. but... It's a, got a hard it's, it's drive the on screen it, you're talk, we're, and it's got a screen, and it, okay. and it connects with with a touch screen monitor. Oh, very nice. Oh, very yeah. nice. So when you're viewing everything on the monitor, and s- instead of taking your little mouse and rolling it around and having to click through all the different settings and buttons, 
it's all right in front of you. You touch the screen for setup. You could drag it along. You could do two finger stretches for the video. Drop it back down. Has really big icons, so it's easy to maneuver through. Did you bring a free sample? Uh, no? I need no, one else in my house. We are conveniently it, it located down the, the 605. Yeah. <laughs> it has the look and feel of an of a iPhone. So, so are they available now? Is that available now? Is that still in our That R&D is available now. We've had those out for about three years now. Oh, so, nice. So, um, can you use it in conjunction with your uh, smartphone? You you can. Uh, I think everybody, that's kind of a, a standard nowadays that everybody expects. Not if for the camera company <laughs> in my neighborhood who has three initials that I shall not mention because my liability insurance isn't that high. Because I keep saying, I want that thing you see on TV there where I can look at my smartphone and turn the camera on. Oh, we don't have that here. Now, you, are you guys going <laughs> to be at uh, um, Vegas in, uh, in April? You're going to have a... Yeah. Uh, the ISC West show, yeah. That, that's, so we'll uh, be able to see that stuff there? Definitely. That's one of our biggest shows that we do here in the United States. I think that's the biggest security convention that's in the United States. Now, is that something my mom's going to use, or is that a commercial application because it's too expensive? Um, it's not a commercial application. It's actually been very well adapted amongst the residential market. Oh. And um, we've been uh, but constantly working. a type of residential, though. Yeah, it, it is a yeah. type of residential, um, and, and everything does depend on, on budget and, and what you're trying yeah. to do with the system. Not for my uh, double I mean, wide. We, we started off with the Costco's and, and the Sam's Club kits. Uh, this is a little bit different. Um, but it's definitely a, a quality system. It, it integrates well into home automation. That's one of our channels that we've we've been developing and seeing a lot more growth in. Uh, you even, you mentioned uh, your local company. Everybody now has has an advertisement on TV that you could do your smart home with your locks and right. I've seen that. See your cameras and integrate your cable and and lighting and audio video. Well, uh, that we're playing really well in that market as well. So I got an idea for you guys. Tell me if this is technically. Well, here, we, here we go. Well, now, I, you know I come for these hey, By the way, he hasn't run. Whatever it is, he hasn't run past me yet. Well, what do you want to say? Oh, you're you're already know. distancing yourself. If you can <laughs> think about it, it'll work, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So where do we have cameras everywhere that we're not thinking about? Right now, where do we have them? On our phones and laptops. That's close, but almost every monitor now that's at least a couple of years mm-hmm. old has mm-hmm. a camera. It's yeah. got a webcam. Mm-hmm. Do people use them? Probably not. I mean, some people do. Oh, well, actually do. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, mm-hmm. well, we can't talk about what you use it for, but uh, so I think what, what uh, you've know, been kinda, spying on me. I've uh, been digging. Oh, he hacked your uh, he hacked your camera. Yeah. That's right. In the employee well, lounge, I hope. Well, that's not too far from where I'm going. Okay, so let's say you guys develop. By the way, do you develop do you develop software with what you do? You must, right? Sure. Okay, because that makes your cameras work. So here's an idea. I have a company. They can't afford a two hundred thousand dollar installation. You know, it costs dough for this stuff, but i got to have cameras for a reason. So I have an office, and I have 50 monitors, and i got 50 webcams on them. Is there any technical reason you couldn't create an intranet, wire all those cameras together, send them off to a central server with a recording device, and turn them on during the day when it's public or turn them off at, or turn them on at night when it's after hours and use them, in essence, for cameras? You I'm not talking about technical spine. reason. There's no technical reason you can't do no, it, right? No, no, but there's a really good practical reason. Why like, is that? Because those uh, many of those uh, uh, screens with the cameras built into them are looking at other screens, and so essentially what you're doing is you're uh, inadvertently broadcasting the information that's all over on your other. That's a computer. fantastic yeah, freaking reason. Point. I never thought yeah. about that. <laughs> so but other than that, no problem. Put that one to bed. Had you mentioned that to me earlier on, I would have thought Your is still going to be fine. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> no, but look, well, guys, that's, that's, that's why he's the expert. No, but I was thinking about my kid's school, <laughs> no, it's right? a good idea. So you got all these yeah. cubicles, and in that scenario, these yeah. cubicles are all faced a certain way, and they're facing out. Yeah. The people's backs are towards the public area, but the cubicle faces, the camera faces into the hallway, so to speak. And I think in certain applications, you could wire it for, let's say, a burglar alarm. So when the building's closed, mm-hmm. there's no expectation yeah, of sure. privacy. Anything that walks past that and creates motion then. Push it into the UL. So I'll let yeah. you guys develop that for free as long as you mention <laughs> idea well, by Chuck. I mean, hackers already t- will hack into That's right. yeah. cams. That's right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So really what you want to do is make it uh, ultimately easier for the hackers to do so because <laughs> that's really what would end well, up Well, no, being. but if you had the proprietary software, yeah. then you could help block that stuff because right. now you would know somebody's on the network. Right now, nobody pays attention to those. Those things like those cameras. Yeah, but when you talk in proprietary software and then you have all these different web cameras and monitor cameras that have their own protocols and and their own language that they're speaking, trying to to dissect that to speak on that proprietary platform, it doesn't make sense unless you're really 
For, from an R and D perspective, uh, I mean, where do, where does a company get its ideas from? Does you do you all sit down and you know knock stuff around, or we or, just ask Chuck? Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah. Not security guy radio. <laughs> if we ask Chuck, uh, I mean, the screen that he was talking about earlier on. I mean, where where did that come from? Was that from input from the from the market, or you know, what you saw when other products, or what? I, I would probably say Apple had a lot to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, oh, in I other words, it's our head of R and G loves Apple, so I think that was probably pretty obvious. But the, the overwhelming majority of our our uh, inspiration, I think, does come from customers because they're pinging us uh, daily. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and you they can be and, they can be wonderful yeah, yeah. and they can be relentless. Yeah. And And uh, generally, uh, out of either one of those things, we're getting some kernel of something we should be doing. What do you th- what's the next big thing? I mean, we've heard about internet through our electrical lines. That can be done right now. Probably not being done because the electrical company doesn't want to have a monopoly on everything or we won't let them. But what, what's the next delivery system for you guys? How is wireless doing in this market? Is mm. it sophisticated enough? I remember doing a wireless application at some HOAs in Calabasas, and the guard shacks were 1.2 miles apart, and you couldn't pull cable, and you couldn't run fiber. And I said, let's try wireless. didn't seem the technology was there for that distance what 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 do you think about that how is it well, well i think uh in the point to point stuff in industrial or, or what, what is app- point to point mean? in applications meaning you have wireless and and you have a distance of a 1.2 miles oh. so in order to compute co- communicate between those two point point a and point b okay. you need a wireless transmitter receiver which now that's more practical but from those wireless transmitters you're still going to have to wire it into a head end or right. or something from that point when you're talking about in a, a residential application, um, we we've never jumped on the wireless bandwagon just because you're you're talking about a, a security pun? and wireless band. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just I don't know, it seemed to me. Was a that a, was ban- that a, a, a camera band joke? Band with, band whatever. Very, seemed like a joke clever. to me. No, it, the, pr- the biggest problem with wireless is uh, it, it just literally sucks up the bandwidth. It okay. just it, you know so, um, and of course Wi-Fi is very. Unsecure, and right. you're very you limited I, on the distance yeah. that you could actually put. Tell you what, I think is the next thing. big thing. Yeah, what is it? And I think this is true uh, for our industry, and certainly true for our company. Uh, is truly effective uh, DIY, do it yourself, because all the things we talked about, where the Home Depots and the and, and the, um, right. those are really bad. Do it yourself. It, it's it's a system that should be installed. And then a homeowner comes along to try to do it, so it doesn't work very yeah. well. But look at a product like Nest, the the uh, thermostat company that was just oh, bought by Google for yeah. what three billion dollars yeah. or some ungodly number. There is a marketplace for a company like ours to take all these years of technological know-how and create. Uh, and again, you know the the, the uh, smartphone industry has been doing this as well in their own way, but to create true DIY products that help in the uh, homeowner on the security and surveillance side. So really, it's just a matter of lowering the price point on that. Technology's here. Well, it's, it's, it, but it's, it's, a, um, it's an engineering thing, well, too. The plug-and-play aspect's not there. It, well, it has to be plug-and-play, true, but it has to be engineered for ease of install, ease of configuration, ease of troubleshooting, ease of use. That's why everybody just fell in love with Nest. It, it, it not being, yeah. you know, besides the fact it was cute. I mean, it just, they need ease. Because if we're going to give them a bunch of cables in a box and yeah, a so-called kit, yeah. that's why those kit things don't do yeah. very well yeah. for anybody. Who's your competition? E, cheap I, cheap manufacturers and cheap markets putting out junk that doesn't compete with you, but everything thinks it's the same and same quality. And Do you have a problem with that? There's hundreds There is, of thousands. Them. Yeah, 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 thousands, yeah. And and the thing is, uh, uh, in other words, how do I know as a buyer? Oh, Brian, dude, you're gonna do it to me now. <laughs> your this clock is, the is wrong. Show up, right? All right real, we've got to go to your website. <laughs> website, uh, Leland.us. L i l i n dot us. Any uh, emails you want to give out? Uh, T Hines at MeritLeland.us. And R Melendez at MeritLeland.us. Home, right. fo- home phone numbers? <laughs> sure. <laughs> his uh, his his. Uh, Six two six eight one. All oh, right. Okay. Well, thanks for coming in, guys. We ran a little. Uh, see what we talk about that. We're not going to have enough information or too much. We ran out of, of time. But are you guys going to come back? You bet. All right. Very good. Thanks again, everybody. Join in next Cheers. Monday for SecurityGuyRadio.com. www.SecurityGuyRadio. Good night. Mm-hmm.